Hi. <laughs> oh, greetings. I certainly hope that you're doing quite well. Well, I not only hope, I pray you are doing well. And I pray the Lord has you in good stead. Uh, I'm looking at what looks like a beautiful sunrise. Hasn't come up. I was in bed early because I was exhausted working on, uh, oh, I should take you into my disco. A uh, Mars Desert Disco. Well, you'd be surprised at the, what you might call Islamic music, the music of uh, Tunisia, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, the music that would have been played around Jesus' time or similar. Uh, <laughs> I have a ton of cleaning up to do in this and organizing in this studio, and it's warm in here today. I don't know why that is. Let's see what we have. Okay. So, uh, well, yesterday was about prayer. It was about really what it's been about each day has been survival of this horrifying situation that I mean you know we knew we knew it would be we knew it was going to be difficult you know I just you, you know everything I said early on really kind of came due but we didn't realize just how many people were involved in it so here's what I was working on this is, please don't laugh at me. sweeper here that's really kind of funny. <laughs> and in the end it went really crazy. So I'm never gonna to conform to disco music, but listen to this. That's my ending. And then the middle, it, it, you know, you dance around. You dance around. It's, I, I have no idea, you know, maybe it's just part of the Travel Memories series. Uh, ow, there's the lights. Stub my toe on my synth holder. Uh, maybe it's part of that, but the, it seems like the Travel Memories are taking me to other planets. <laughs> so this one is called Mars Desert Disco. Uh, featuring uh, Middle Eastern music. In fact, if you go to a disco in Morocco, you might hear something along those lines. 
I mean, it's, it's very almost campy. You know, it's so cliched. But sometimes you've got to do something like that. And I arranged it, you know, from loops and samples and things. And, you know, you still have to do all the same mixing. But uh, getting the real authentic flavor through real uh, Middle Eastern musicians playing real stuff. And the last one I did, Travel Memories 2, which uh, also features Moroccan airports, uh, a combination of me playing uh, uh, my outboard synths and jamming along with uh, also designing my own drums to go along with some of the uh, acoustic darabuka drums and bells that were being played. I like the track from yesterday, Travel Memories 2. It doesn't have a groove like this where it just never lets you down, it keeps you going. It kind of goes for a while and then stops and kind of turns around and goes again. But it's really, it's really, I don't know, I mean, I'm so glad I did it. Because when I play it back, I know I'm hearing something I would never hear anywhere else. Something very unique. I'm not sure what, how to categorize it, but it would be fantastic in a movie. If you put that footage in, if you want to do video, take that. Travel memories too. Stick it in the background of the footage. I guarantee you, it's going to be good. Uh, so then that led to the Mars Disco. Travel memories three. Uh, entering into a disco on Mars. That just happens to be playing Middle Eastern music in the desert. It's the Mars Desert Disco. And. To that extent, uh, gosh, what can I say about that? That's uh, strange we'd be going back to Mars. But apparently, I have some connection to Mars, clearly. But I've, I'm not sure what it is exactly. So right now it's fictional, yeah. So there's a fictional connection, but some kind of connection about having been there with advanced technology in a Mars disco, maybe it means that Islam is really the religion that takes over. Just like in Dune, you know, like in Frank Herbert's Dune. Uh, I don't know. All I know is the music of the Middle East pulls at my heart because I, I was there. I, I would have had to have been. There's no way that I could know that music so well having never been trained in it, and it is very technical. I don't know, it's a toss-up between the Indian tabla players and the, and the drummers of, uh, you know, Morocco and, you know, Northern Africa and, you know, the, the desert, the, the Bedouins and whatnot. It's a toss-up. I, I, it seems in the Middle East they're faster, well, they're fast on the tablas too, but it just seems to me those, those two areas of drumming, Middle Eastern and, and Indian, uh, really have the corner on the market in terms of the best drumming. But how is it that I knew the beat? Like when I play drums, I just play that beat automatically. I play that, I could jam with this group automatically. And do. Why is that? There was never any training, I was never exposed to Middle Eastern music. I could even sing the call to prayer, the Islamic call to prayer. I mean, not exactly with the same words, but that similar style. And why is that? Why is that? There is no way that I would have known any of that. No way. There's no way that I was exposed to it on a TV show, so I just got it. That's not it. Or a movie like Lawrence of Arabia or something. That's still not it. No, that, you have to know that. You know it or you don't know it. If you know it, it's just in your, it's deep in you, like you know it. When you hear it, you recognize it, and it causes a change to come over you. I look at other people, it does not cause the same change. Why is that? So, discovering a little bit more about my own roots of music. Oh, no, no, it's good. I mean, you know, it's good because it, it, it see, because now I realize in my past is our future. So that's even more sci-fi. And, um... 
well, the same music of India, the classical music of India does the same thing to me. Why is that if I was never exposed? How come? Uh, could, could it be it's just, is it, what is it, 4, 3, 2 hertz? No. Uh, well, you know, what it's tuned to usually is just typical A, you know, you know, 440A probably. Concert A is what they call it. I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't know about I know one thing. I love the unfolding mystery. I love to understand, and I, I think I will. There's ancient memories, you know? And, I, I mean, the only people that ever poo-pooed me thinking about ancient memories or what life means or anything were, were the people in the churches. They're the only ones that shushed me. Everyone else encouraged me. I mean, or they didn't encourage me, but they never really, my parents did. But, I mean, people in general didn't discourage me. You know, from my, and, and well, until I got into uh, Satanism and its role in the world. And that was like a, a, a tender, um, apparently I was touching a nerve there. And I was shushed again. But those are the only two incidents. It's when I was uh, just being myself in the church. I was attacked for that. Any church, doesn't matter, <laughs> any organization that says Jesus on it. And it doesn't matter, city yoga too, um, all of them. Nichiren Shoshu Buddhism, all of them. Same thing. I, I try to be good, you know, not make a ruffle. I know, because I know that I've had an effect where, where things just fall apart. I know that, but I don't go in there looking for trouble. I'm just trying to sit there, worship the Lord, and, you know, somewhere along the way, I, I guess I'm weak. I just must say something or do something that then triggers a massive uniform response as if everyone has the same mind, no one has their own brain, uh, across the board, high to low, left to right, uh, congregation wide. Now, how is that? Unless that con the old, I'll tell you how it is. The only way that could happen is if the entire congregation was compromised, i.e. not acceptable to Jesus Christ. That's what which is a huge tragedy, man. A huge tragedy. There is no other way you could get a, a situation as effed up as that is to exist unless you were self-compromised, self-corrupted out of the body of Christ, pretending to be in Christ when you're not. So when Jesus says these are say they're Jews but are not, he's, it applies to Christians e equally as well. These are people that say they're Christians but are not. They have a likeness and a form of the spirit, but uh, deny the essence thereof, deny the power thereof. They don't get anywhere in their prayer life. You know, not that I can see. I've been to mass healings. I go up to the stage. I ask for healing, 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 please. And all they want to do is delude me. Well, I tell you right now, this country, is it the reason that, 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 that these people don't say anything about the Christians getting their heads cut off? Is because they're obviously compromised. They don't care about the Christians getting their heads cut off in the American churches. They don't care. I Let me be the first to say it. They don't care. Period. Or they would show it. So far, nothing. And I think it's just absolutely shameful that these people are allowed to go on. But you see what happened. The reason they can't say anything is because it goes to criticism of the, yes, the government or some government on the earth, which goes against their precious indoctrination of mind control, Romans 13, which I showed you, you don't have to uh, succumb to that and you don't have to throw it uh, off the passage. There's a way to make that work out in the context of biblical literature, but of course, the biggest illiterate people in the Bible are the people in church. They're the most illiterate of all. Oh, they can quote line and verse much better than I can probably. And they know, they've memorized it all and how many books and how many this and what year they took place and what was happening in the whole historical context. I'm sure they can do all that, the best ones anyway. 
but they have no idea what the Bible says, obviously, so they're illiterate. <laughs> they just memorized a stupid book. Shame, shame, shame. Oh, I have every bit the authority to say what I just said. In fact, if you want me to repeat it, just go ahead and roll the tape back and listen to it again. Yeah, I said that. They don't care. That's what I said. If they ever do, I will mention it. So far, zero. Franklin Graham had a little prayer today on, on my Twitter feed. It was very nice. He just quoted a verse from a psalm. You know, Lord, and I know he's, I know he's kind of using it to be preachy, but he's trying not to be, which is so cute. And he's saying, Lord, give me the right thought, word, and deed today that are acceptable in your eyes. And I'd say, Franklin, you either get off that, I don't know what you have up your butt, but you get it out of there and get on the, you know, and say something and do something, start screaming. And these little niceties you do on Twitter, I watch because I, oh no, you don't escape me. And I'm like, you know, get, get light a fire. You're criticizing someone that flew down to Haiti and to other places to help and relief and to Hurricane Sandy and all that. Yeah, no, I know, I'm, I, I, I fully understand the shepherds thing and all that. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm just simply saying that, because uh, I'm not in his 501c3 church, he is. So he's in his compromised church. Um, so say something. Do something. I mean, the scripture that he quoted was like censorship, if you really want to break it down. Lord, let these stupid Christians out here know they must be censored and stop talking all this trash on the internet or about Donald Trump or whatever. You know, I could see what he was doing, what he was up to. Well, he's in the political debate. Sure he is. He's, he's, he's trying to tell people to not say anything. So, you know, our socialist government goes on, completely overturning life. You, you see in Venezuela where they're confiscating the, the farms, right? They're, they're confiscating all the food because they're bankrupt and no one can afford it. So the government's taking it over. Just like that, confiscating private property, just like that. They confiscated the oil, now the food. Every, they, they, no, they won't be satisfied until the Venezuelans kill every last Venezuelan because they can't pay for them. And when socialists can't get something done, they pit one faction against another, hoping to commit genocide so they have less to pay for. More in the coffers of the few elites that are in the fields of Elysium having it up and flying around on Air Force One having a good old time while the rest of the people suffer in their poverty. I tell you, the Lord's justice cannot come soon enough for me. And when it comes, I'm dancing and 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 I'm rejoicing. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm praising the Lord and I'm worshiping God with music and sound loud as can be. The amplifiers turned up to 11 everywhere. Thank you. Thank you for putting these miserable maggots out of their, out of all of our misery. Thank you. Uh, uh, was I referring to the government? No, I don't think so. I was just saying miserable maggots. That the Lord's going to bring judgment one of these days on people who deserve judgment. I didn't say who they were. Oh, you said who they were. Oh, you have an idea of who they were. Oh, you want to fill in the blanks for my words. I didn't say who. You did. You're guilty. I never said who. You got tripped up on that one, dude. Well, I assume you mean the government. No, I'm not necessarily. The people I worry about are not in government at all. So you, you have a real problem intellectually, don't you? You have a problem processing because you've been in the hive so long. Can't quite keep up. 
can't do the math. Well, that's the, that's the price of giving up one's individuality. You, can't, you no longer can do the math. No longer can think, for, i.e., it's a metaphor, genius. All I mean is you can no longer think for yourselves. Okay? I have there, I spell it out for you because it really, if you shouldn't even listen to this podcast because as, as I go on, I, I kind of get into a shorthand mode to get everything said because I have to really rush to get it all said, you know, because it gets ridiculous at three hours, you know, and I'm still not done. And, and so I have to start shorthanding it, meaning we have to talk metaphorically. We can't, we can't just stop and, and explain. No, I, I was just thinking of the ISIS being run by the State Department or whatever and the Pentagon and God knows who else, but being completely funded by the United States and, you know, owned and operated by cutting Christians' heads off and how the Franklin Grahams of the world say nothing. I just, I don't understand that. Um, you know, am I bringing up? No, the Lord rebuke thee, obviously. I said the Lord will bring judgment. The Lord will bring justice. The Lord rebuke thee. The Lord rebuke whoever is doing it. But how can they, how can they um, go on like that? Acting like those Christians have nothing to do with them. No, I'm outraged. That's why I'm bringing it up. I don't think we should be killing Christians with our tax dollars. I, I, you know, I think that's bad policy, don't you? It's outrageous. It's worse in a way than the, uh, I mean, nothing could be worse than selling, you know, cutting up the fetuses while they're alive, you know, traumatizing them into death and then quickly selling their body parts before they uh, decay. I think this is terrible. You know, this is worse than the sacrifices to Molech. Do you really think God's gonna bless America? Can you really even sing God bless America knowing that's going on in your name? I don't think so, unless you're just so callous that you're just, just an asshole. Well, maybe yeah, we all are. No, so far that I know, the word asshole doesn't get bleeped. You can say that. I mean, it's kind of borderline, but it's, you know, you can say that. Well, I just don't know what else to say. You know, if, if, if it's okay to kill the Christians and kill the babies and, and do all the things without you, you know, and you just keep going along, cowed, head down, doing what you're told, doing what your churches tell you to do, you know, letting your mind completely atrophy and going senile, you know, when you're, when you're 40 and uh, just hoping to get through it. You're not gonna get through it. You're gonna get, you're gonna get stopped. They're going to come get you one day. And then when you're sitting there in your cell, you're going to remember what I said. And you're going to go, you know, I made a mistake. Well, I don't know. If, if it goes like Venezuela, if it goes into a world catastrophe, martial law and all that stuff, they'll round people up for guns and they'll, they'll round people up, you know, who can't take care of themselves and take them to these camps and, you know, and then kill them all. That's a good way to quickly depopulate. Oh, they'll make it look like it's a disease or something. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll do it in a way that uh, tortures the crap out of people, but uh, gets them off the hook. You're living in hell, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, you went to hell. You did something in a prior lifetime in your life somewhere, you know, because you're not, this is not your first rodeo. And you obviously screwed up because you're in hell. And it has a veneer of Disneyland, and so it, it, it looks very palpable. And then it, you know, but you keep running into um, the devil because this is his home right here. And horror, beyond horror, and wars and, and awful things. But you know, it's a hell that that has God here too. And there's peace and strength in the Lord too. But one thing's for sure, it's really not completely about this life. But it's a hellish, you know, I'll, I'll just call it hell. I mean, it's not the definition of hell, like the lake of fire. The lake of fire is like a permanent, awful, just, it's just, you know, it's a metaphor for a situation where there's no good. It's just, it's just burning heat, pain and suffering, and there's no in between. Here we have a, uh, obviously we have a respite from all that. 
But in general, when you consider the wars, the rumors of wars, what these very few hundred people do to billions, and nobody has the balls to do anything, I, I'm, I'm so disgusted with our military in the United States. I mean, no one in the military has any balls to do anything. They just think it's fine the way it's going in the military, really? I mean, you know, when was the last time you guys won a war? You're not going to either because you threw God out. You can't look, listen, go back and read, you know, Kings, you know, and, and, you know, one and two Kings and read about David. You know, read about David and uh, Solomon, and read Genesis, read, read it all. But I mean, read about these, these uh, various, uh, you know, read about how David came to power and how hey, the, the battles he had with the, the Philistines and how he had to have God with him in the fight. Read about the Gideons. It's, it's a fight every day. You're born, and you're born in a war zone, and you fight off every day of your life. And the minute you put down your guard and go have a good time, it's the minute you get... That's what happened in this country. We put down our guard, went out and had a good old time since the 60s and 70s and 80s, following the Pied Pipers of rock and roll, and then eventually pop music, right off the cliff. So we couldn't defend ourselves. So now uh, we're enslaved in captivity. Oh, you think it's fine, do you? Well, go ahead and make your prison your paradise. It's not paradise for me. I'm not going to go into your delusion. I'm not insane like you. I'm not mentally ill like you. And I'm not going to be because I'm, I, I've, I'm very expansive. I have a life that expands well beyond all the four walls of this thing, believe me. And I remember it. And I see it. And I know it. So I'm not going to be content with this. Besides... From what I understand, everybody dies here anyway. So what's your point? Right, you have no point. Exactly. That's my point. You don't have a leg to stand on and you know it. You're in a losing fight and you know it. And you're only going to lose in the end. You know, fighting God. You know, fighting the, the, the world. Fighting for your place in this world only to become sick and die. What, what's the point? Working every day until you just are a curled up mess, withered, and unable to take care of yourself. What good is that? Hmm? How many ways can I, can I prove to you it's hell? Really, only the strong survive here. You've got to be tough, tough, tough. A lot of people aren't tough. That's why they go to the Lord. Because the meek need to be protected, and the Lord will protect the meek. I can't fight the world. I've, I tried that. I got my butt kicked, but good, and, and deservedly so, because I was being stupid and prideful and, and, and childish, of course. You know, recognizing you don't just go jump out in front of a freight train going 150 miles an hour. You just don't do that. Okay, so, you know, so, you, so how, how do you live then? Well, there's only one way to live. And not, not the way that the world prescribes, because that's, you know, the, they say, if you want to live, join a death cult. No, thank you. No, thank you. I've got a job to do here. I've got to be about getting back home. And getting back home, uh, this is not my home. So get, I've got to go about getting back home. And if I join any of these things, I'm stopped right there. I'm not going to do that. I got to get back. I've got bigger fish to fry than you, buddy, and your stupid world that you promote. So I got other things to do, sir. You know, I'm not going to be held captive here by you, Satan, or any of your stupid minions either. Because I've got a life to live. I've got a destiny to fulfill, and it doesn't involve this um Re spin cycle, stupid, dumbass world of yours. Well, I really feel the, uh, you know what, and vinegar today. Yeah, well, it just, at times it just gets too much. 
You know, the ignorance is too much for me. The fact that people don't know who they are is too much for me. The fact that people don't even know why they're here is too much for me. I can't take it. Well, let me explain to you why you're here, just so you understand. And then you know, maybe you can just go from there. You're here in order to get out of here. I mean, it sounds a little strange, but you're here to find the way out, the way home, just like me. Everyone is. Not to build your life here and, you know, security here. Of course, God laughs at that. You know, have plans here for future generations. No, the only thing going on is your generation, you, because you're going to die. You won't be here for future generations. You're not going to leave, obviously. This generation left the world a thousand times worse than the world we inherited. A thousand times worse. Uh, I think baby boomers should be ashamed of themselves. Absolutely selfish. You know what? And look what they did with all this worship of self and narcissism. They left it worse. It was going along, you know, great-grandparents left to the grandparents and on. And, you know, they all tried to leave a little bit better world, a little better chance for their offspring to, to, to have, you know, the good life, to be successful you know, to be able to feed themselves and feed their children and, and to, to be able to do things in life, you know, instead of just being slaves or working stiffs and, you know, slaves to, unto death. And um, that actually did happen here. Things got a little better each generation until the last one, who just, I don't know what's wrong with them. All they wanted to do is just worship themselves. And that's all they ended up doing. I mean, look at the look, look at the churches today. I mean, just as an emblem of something, it's all about me, right? I go to church for me, so I can have self improvement, so I can have a better life. Um, it used to be church was a place you would go when you're really hurting and get help, but you would connect with the Lord is what you would do. And hence you would be on your journey. And it was to inspire you along the, along that journey, not to control you. I mean, that's what it was supposed to be. That was what the whole Protestant Reformation was about, was about, you know, empowering the individual. And what did it do? It wound up being the most narcissistic thing of all far worse than the church that it split from. You know, I, I mean, this idea of telling people the rapture thing to keep them glued into the pews, I mean, that was, that's sick and unfair. And, and I mean, that's cruel to tell people stuff like that and to lead them on like that. And then to tell them, to, you know, the, 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 to have everyone scripture thumping each other with the Bible, you know, as if, as if that's the ultimate authority of, of, of all things, and it's not. It never has been. It's only the, it can only be authoritative in the hands of someone that, that obviously has the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ. Otherwise, it's just, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a dry, you know, dead book. But, you know, you run into these people, and they defend this, this Protestant um, trick of, of the infallibility of the Bible and the rapture and whatever else they do. And they go on endlessly and endlessly about the end times and who the Antichrist is and who the Antichrist isn't and this and that and everything else. Getting nowhere themselves except bickering and arguing about something they don't know anything about to begin with. And so a life frittered away on gibberish and nothingness and stupidity. Frittered away. Oh, don't worry. They'll, 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 they'll guilt trip you. They'll, they'll, they'll say, well, you should be doing this or doing that, the, imitating Christ and all that. He said, well, I am. I'm doing what, what the Lord wants me to do. Well, I am, I'm not seeing it that way. I'm witnessing that. No, no. You don't have any control over me. Every, nothing you say registers. 
It's almost like you're flapping your jaw, but nothing's coming out. You know, you get three witnesses, I have a hundred. Each of us, if we all do what the Lord has called us to do, this world will be better. And we're, none of us are supposed to do what's being dictated to. We take our dictation from the Lord. I do one thing, this guy over here does another, that guy over there gives another, and eventually the Lord's will be done. Each one has a little piece. No two necessarily do the same thing or be a big repeat. In the churches, they want everyone to be uniform and do the same thing. Then you have no diversity. They're so obsessed with control that they, that they all eventually just repeat one another and hence make no progress. Uh, they, no, I know they could listen to this. They go, what are you talking about, Zeph? Um, I'm talking about having mind control and slavery in the name of Jesus called church under 501c3 versus being an individual empowered by the Lord you know, to do whatever you do in the world and to share fellowship and worship of God when possible because we live in such a torn war zone. Oh, the buildings are still up, but it's a, it's a, it might as well, they might as well all be rubble right now because this is a, it's a war-torn zone. And we, we, you know, we're, we're, we're just vagabonds in this world, crossing the world, trying to find a, a, a person here, a person there to fellowship with. Very difficult because most are under mind control or zombies. And so we, we, we look around the world trying to find some kind of solace, some kind of peace, realizing that it's so broken that no one man can, do, can really make a dent anyway. Realizing that if Jesus returned, the church would take it upon themselves to rip him to shreds as the, as the Antichrist. Who knows? I, I just, you know, I, I um, affirm Plato's cave story. Man is deaf, dumb, and blind. And the more educated he is, the blinder he gets. So, because he loses his own interior process through the externalization of um, a revised history and so forth. Yeah. So right about here we pause and, you know, reflect and realize what we need to teach our children, we need to teach them how to remain intact and use the Bible and the, and the study of thereof in terms of always coming back to that individual, that child, to make sure he understands or she understands. Now my child, Francesca, she knows all this already. I, I was blessed. I, I didn't, I, you know, I, we had time when we shared the Bible, we shared scripture together, we, that I, I told her what I thought, but all this, she came into her own knowledge. It's funny. She can uh, actually minister or even lecture to me about a lot of things that uh, I might have let go to the wayside or whatever. I mean, she doesn't miss anything. So she's got all of it at once at her age. Apparently, a lot of the kids do. Yeah, her eyes are open. She knows the difference between a lamb and a worlder. And, and she tells me, like, oh, this guy over here, he's, the, he's such a lamb, and that's over here, that's a, that's a Gucci girl, and that's a, you know, she knows exactly who's who and what's what. Yeah, she's as wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove, and, and I'm just saying that... Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know where she got all her knowledge from, but it seemed that, you know, she, she, well, she'll take off from where I am. But I mean, I've spent time with her and we talked and we and taught her things, but I mean, she just took it to a whole new level. So it's like talking to somebody my age. I don't know how she got that, uh, precocious, you know, or how she understood that much wisdom, but she just does. I think she realized a few years ago, she was, you know, or a decade ago, or maybe a little more, that she was never going to be um, with the world. They tried to make her into a Gucci girl when she was like 12 and 13, you know, right around that, that age, right? But it didn't, she bounced off the mirror, <laughs> chip off the old block. 
And, um, you know, she's just been getting better and better. It's taken a long time for her to really come into her own, but she is. But it didn't take her forever to learn the things I know. I mean, she, she seemed to get it all at once. Like, she, let me explain what's going on there. She already knew everything. It was in her soul. That's right. She already knew. She's an old soul. She already knew everything. She already knew. And, uh, you know, not without her struggles, because in this life it's hard to know, to have your eyes open as she does, and to be able to get through, you know, things like uh, people see you there and then they just attack for no reason. It's, it's, uh, it's, it, it's part and parcel of being in hell, you know, coming to a world of a hellish world like this one, where if you're... Um, if, you know, they're a little bit different species, you know what I mean? They jump you. Yeah. Oh, you know, bad things can happen. People even get killed, and then it all gets covered up like the person just sort of a missing person. No one knows what happened. But it, it, they, they, they're all demon-possessed, so they change, they kill the person, and then they flip back to where they were. It gets cleaned up, and no one's the wiser, and nothing ever happened. I mean, it's that dangerous on this planet that you don't want to be the one lamb in the middle of the wolves or they, they go ravenous and, 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 but they don't get in trouble. No, no, our prisons are filled to capacity. I don't know, what do we have? You know, how many millions do we have in prison? Well, um, they make sure that those prisons stay filled and overpopulated because they make money off it. So they rack them and stack them. Oh, that's already been going on. That's a total tyranny police state right there. That's total hell right there. You're in there for drugs and, and you know, for marijuana, for life. Are you, are you kidding me? Only the cruelest, the cruelest of cruel nations would do something like that to someone. It's not even, even possible for me to conceive of a concept so evil just on my own. No, take, you know, chalk it up to America, the decadent one, the stupid people coming up with that. So it's no wonder young people don't have any respect for the government or for people in government or people of authority or authority figures. They don't respect them at all. They, they, they're no wonder it's gotten to that point where they don't respect teachers or anyone because everyone has given them a bad example. You know, you're supposed to lead by example. We're supposed to be better, as good as we can be so the kids get a good, you know, footing. And so they respect you. Well, the reason they don't respect you, America, the kids, that is, and they don't, believe me, they don't, is because you don't deserve respect. All you judges, all you people in authority, whatever, wherever you are, all you teachers, politicians, whatever. Um, once you've earned the respect again, then maybe you'll get it, but you've, you have, uh, you've lost that because you don't deserve that respect, so you're not going to get it from the young generation. They feel you've betrayed them, so they can do whatever they want. They are lawless in the sense that uh, they don't feel that your laws are valid. It's just like Obama, when he came into office, he was lawless and set an example for all the kids to be lawless. You don't think the kids know? Of course they know. You don't think they see that and all the lavish vacations and all the tyranny and all the, the, uh, the, 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 the whole failure of this, of this government, the whole complete total embarrassment of these people. You don't think the kids know that? Of course they know that and they don't respect. I don't think Obama's kids respect him at all. You can see it. They do their own thing. They don't, they, you know, because why? Look what people have to do to be in politics. Look, 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 look what they do in their backroom deals and the corrupt judges giving people either setting them free or, or throwing the book at them for nothing. You know, look at, look, look at all the, uh, the, the, the fact that they go by, with all the logic, all the education, they just go by rank opinion, whichever way the wind blows, whatever corruption's going on there, they, 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 they're in on it. And uh, the, the public has lost total confidence in all the uh, leaders of our society who are supposed to be uh, you know, examples, especially to children and to students and, and, and you know, people that are very young and impressionable and want to find a place in this world. Well, how can they 
with these these jerks in Congress and everywhere else as their examples, with these sold-out preachers in these churches. Where can they find an example? With these sports figures all hopped up on drugs and cheating. <clears throat> Where <clears throat> And um, the rock stars and the entertainment business and the tawdriness of that and the tawdriness of these people that are stars and, 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 and flaunting whatever, just appearing as, uh, you know, um, total... Uh, hedonists and selfish, narcissistic, uh, self-worshipping, self-aggrandizing punks as their leaders in the entertainment business. So where do they go to find an, a role model? It's no wonder they don't care about, uh, you know, the, the, the drugs, sex, drugs, rock and roll. I'm sorry, but by 11 or 12, you're completely indoctrinated in all that. And if you get pregnant, you just, just kill the kid. I mean, why should they respect anything? Why not go totally lawless? No, it's hell. It's, it's, it's pure, torturous horror movie every day, every second of every day. And if they get their way, they'll make sure everyone feels anxious in their homes so that any minute they feel they're going to be stampeded upon or, or, or killed for, some, for just being there. That they should have never been born in the first place is the way people feel now. Right, why should have even been born in the first place? This is nothing but uh, you know, it's beautiful blue skies and beautiful land, beautiful animals, except that um, if you're a human, you're a target and they're going to come get you. So you can never relax and sing like a bird or fly in the air. You can't ever have two minutes to rest. No, it's going to be a struggle every day. And anything that uh, doesn't go along with the stupidest and the dumbest is targeted as some sort of divergent misfit. It is just incredible. I, I know I no longer ask the Lord, why did I come here? Obviously, I'm here because he wanted me here. And you know, maybe I came here as a consequence of a prior action. I don't know. I can't prove that. I don't know. I have a good, strong feeling. Just like I don't know how I know music that I know that came from somewhere else. I don't know. Is it a collective gene pool? I don't know. But see, I've been forbidden to look into these mysteries by the Christians. I, I'm supposed to sit here a blank with a blank look and a blank mind and a blank everything waiting to be programmed by the local minister who's going to tell me how to you know, shape me into what he or they want. And then they want my respect. What else do they want from me? Am I their product? They could just do what they want with. No. Damn it, no. I am not someone's toy or their property. I'm a sovereign child of God and I will walk out of here. You all can stay if you like. Go ahead and die. They'll spin you right back. You'll go in the tunnel of light, see all your friends, your dogs. You'll fall for it hook, line, and sinker, and you'll be worse next time. It'll be pure hell with no good. Just all, it'll be just like every, you're born, you're tortured. How about this? We'll spin cycle you into being aborted for about 100,000 times in a row. Huh? Because you dared to think outside the box. So that's going to be your fate. No, I think really we need to, 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 to pay attention to the roadmaps to find out the real, the real story here on Earth is how you're going to get through it and how you're going to get out of it. The, nothing else matters. Well, you know, yes, along the way, you, 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 you know, have the compassion, have your heart out of love, you help 
one another. You help one another suffering. Yeah, you do the best you can to ease the suffering because it's all suffering. So you do the best you can to, to ease it because you can't take it away because it's, it's there all the time. Because if it isn't you, it's somebody else. You get their head cut off. Screaming and dying, aborted children. I mean, you know, there's screaming going on all over the place. I can hear it. So, you know, good luck creating your own little bubble to live in. These people drop, you know the bubble creators, you know what I've noticed? They're out doing their thing, they just drop dead every once in a while. Have you noticed that? They're running along, not a care in the world, boom, drop dead. Because they didn't get it. It's not about them and their little bubble, right? Not, the reason, I know why they drop dead, because they're not functioning. Because they're, they be, they, they're, they're conformed, so they're, they're in the hive, they're not an island. But then, according to the Lord, they are an island because they're in this bubble, not doing anything for the Lord. So it's like the Lord looks at him and goes, why, so why should I let you live? What have you done for me lately? Nothing. What have you ever done for me? Nothing. All right, you know, here's another failure. Just pluck that weed out. Maybe next time he'll wake up. <laughs> but I, I sort of doubt it. Maybe we just need weeds to be plucked every time so that, that, that the, the good crops can grow up. You know, we, we, we don't want to spray Roundup on them, do we? Okay, okay, I'm going to calm down. No, well, these are my observations of having been, you know, I, I said that, you know, God's not separate from politics, but I, I have to tell you, I, I have to have a detached view of it because it is it's so exasperating and so depressing that I I realize now I mean nothing's changed since the playground in grade school friends no no not high school high school is too sophisticated the 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 whole Donald Trump Megan Kelly thing for example it's um it's 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 you know it's it's the playground isn't it well who sides up with Megan and Fox News and who sides up or, and I see them you know the the, the, the people, the approved of guests on Fox News, lining up with Fox, and every one of them a sellout. And then I see the, the uh, Donald Trump's, you know, you know, still the Mavericks out there wanting to defend Trump and, and his, I guess he said her eyes are red with blood or flowing, oozing blood or whatever, like the rest of her or whatever. It's whatever he said. It it's, doesn't even matter. It's just ridiculous. He brought in the highest ratings of any show ever, and it was all Donald Trump. It was not anything to do with... Uh, the, th the three clowns of Fox News. But to see people that I had trusted, and just going down the list, we have Tammy Bruce, the ultimate sellout. We have, uh, what's her name, the Camille Paglia. You know, people you'd think were mavericks and had their own mind, and they don't. They, they just want to suck up to, uh, you know, to uh, Rupert Murdoch. And, and I can see that now. I understand. But it's really, you know... Uh, uh, I don't know. I, there, there's a number of others. Dana Lash, uh, people you'd think were um, in general. But um, I was pretty happy with the... Uh, well, you see, the Donald is a test. We've already had some, some prophetic thing with him. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a hand on him. There's, a, there's an anointing of some kind, something supernatural. They would have never brought in 24 million viewers. So something, you know... and. And, and the, these people that call themselves Christians, they don't even notice it. They're so stupid. I mean, you're dealing with this country, the seriously dumb people. And you see them, on, oh, no, it's Jonah Goldberg at the uh, National Review. It's all these people that are the intelligentsia who are supposedly conservative. And all they want to do is marginalize. I mean, what, look, what I'm witness to with this, and this is probably why I'm in a bad mood today. Oh, you'll get this podcast, Sure. You're not going to, everything's not rosy every day, you know. Well, I just can't bear being, you know, going another nine years and I'll be 70. And then what do I do? If it's the same way then as it is now, I'm going to die of a broken heart. And it'll be you people's fault. That's right. You will break my heart. Because you still won't get it, by the You'll still be playing the same game, expecting a different result, won't you? I know you will.
Well, you're not going to break my heart. You know why? Because I'm putting everything on Jesus. And I'm getting out of here. I'm going home. And I ain't never looking back. Because I don't want to remember this. Just like people don't talk about what happened in the war, I don't want to talk about what happened here. I'd like to just forget it like it never happened. Anyway, what put me in such a wonderful, pleasant mood, which I know you just love, unless you can relate to what I'm saying, and, and of course, there's a few prophetic remarks that I make, but I'm not going to draw attention to why I single someone out, because there are people that listen with some kind of, I don't know, they want to shoot me down, they they know, is he for real? <laughs> These are people that will never be happy, no matter what they do. I mean, to the pure, you know, to the impure, all things are impure. So... Me and the whole world, we're all impure. And we're all, we all screwed. Everything is screwed. It's just screwed. And so nothing is believable. Everything is screwed and just screwed. So I don't know, what, when do we take the pill, right? When do we take our cyanide pill? But uh, I know this kind of talk is kind of self-indulgent. You know. Definitely. Um, well, no, it's very conservative because you see, I'm not singling out the Congress or the president. Or the, I mean, I've mentioned them, but it's just like I'll mention any industry. But I don't want to mention anyone specifically because you see, uh, God's judgment's going to come to this world. It's already come. I mean, let me let me back up and say this correctly. God is from okay. If you listen a couple of episodes ago. You heard me talking about 2 Peter 2, 9, which basically the Lord says, I can handle the righteous and I can handle the, those that need punishment. Don't worry, they're, 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 you know, justice will be done. No one gets away with anything on this planet. Okay, so basically then don't rail against dignities and governments and things like that. Don't despise government, right? But even Michael the archangel, go to Jude. Don't bring railing accusations against dignities. Book of Jude ties in with 2 Peter, okay? We got that connection. Yeah, that one proves the other. And then that elucidates Romans 13, as we, as you saw. So that makes Romans 13 make sense in that context of what we're dealing with. Uh, dignities are anything from angels, uh, God's authority in government, uh, church officials, government, um, you know, uh, could be the Vatican, the presidency, all of it. Now, what happens if all of it's corrupt? Well, the very head of 2 Peter 2, 9, I mean, 2, 9, the ninth verse, the Lord is saying, I can deal with these people. But even Michael, when he was, when he was you know, coming against the devil, he says, the Lord rebu rebuke thee. And this is the most powerful archangel. The Lord rebuke thee. The Lord rebuke thee, Congress, and the rest of you, and all the rest of you that fall into this trap of just being selfish, um, mean, uh, predatory, you know what? The Lord rebuke thee, I say. So I want to say that, uh, I want to give the whole podcast over that. I respect the Lord enough to say the Lord rebuke thee, not me. That's what I was saying before. The Lord will bring judgment. I don't bring judgment. I already have faith enough to know the Lord will deal with it in his time. And I do know that no one gets away with anything. So I know, So since I know those things, I can relax about that at least. It still doesn't make it any easier for me getting through it when every wall that I have that blocks me is called human ignorance around me that stops us from ever being able to get anywhere. All, all we do is bicker and fight and scream and yell and die. That's all we do. Oh, we fornicate and we, you know, imbibe ourselves and we, you know, we, we anesthetize ourselves and we, we do all the, we, we live in denial about this whole thing. And then we drop dead. Okay, so I, there, there's your icing on the cake. Next, please, you know. So anyway, switching over to politic. So there's this big street fight going on. And you got Donald Trump saying, you know, he, you know she, she chose him off. She, she basically, here's what happened. And this is an article you can read from... Uh, don't have to believe me, but Alex uh, Marlowe, who's the editor-in-chief of Breitbart, he basically um, said it best. And 
you know, he said that the, 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 the Fox News was acting as the police arm of the GOP establishment to take down Trump and make sure that he's marginalized so that he becomes like a Ross Perot or, or like a, no, I'm sorry, like a uh, Ron Paul or Ross Perot. In other words, you know, nothing wrong with Ron Paul, but he would never get elected. See what I mean? He's been marginalized because he is, he could never get elected and no one takes him seriously. And no one did take him seriously. People had Ron Paul stickers and all that, but I guess no one told them he's unelectable. So what they're trying to do is take him down to where he's just a showman, it's the Trump show, but he's unelectable. No one has ever in the history of ratings seen 24 million people watching a political debate, ever in the history of the last number was like three and a half million. And even the secondary debate that Carly Fiorina won was, um, was three and a half million, which was what they would have expected for the big show. Um, Fox News people, this, this, this predatory, evil um, prostitute Megyn Kelly and her prostitute whore friends, uh, Chris Wallace and uh, Brett Baer, um, they planned and they put Megyn up to it to take down Trump. And they didn't want to have a debate. It was all about taking this guy out in the first debate so that he was on the sidelines for the, so they, for the rest of the show, so the establishment didn't have to worry. So she was doing the bidding of her bosses, Roger Ailes and Rupert Murdoch, and the rest of the, uh, you know, Boehner, McConnell, and the rest of your friends, Obama, and the rest of your good pals. They wouldn't do that unless Donald was for real. In other words, the guy is posing, now he's becoming a problem, a nuisance, and his buddies want, want to take him out, and, and they're using these clowns who deserve no respect for the rest of their lives to do it. I hate to tell you this, but uh, Carly Fiorina I know. backs Megan. I, 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 I know. I hate to tell you this, but Fox News is one of the biggest contributors to Hillary Clinton. I understand they want Hillary. Yeah, well, I'm going to get to that. So yes, Fox News wants Hillary Clinton to win. And so they're, all the stuff that you see going on is about getting that done. And uh, Carly Fiorina, who I've been supportive of because of her speech, looks like she's sold out to Fox News too, so there's no panacea. I know, I should never have gotten involved in it in the first place. What would you like me to do? Go twiddle my thumbs on a mountaintop somewhere? Maybe the aliens will come, we can fight them, huh? What do you want me to do then? Go to Calcutta and feed the poor. Okay. Thanks. Are you, will you be joining me? Oh, of course not. Um, yeah, I know. Aren't people wonderful? Okay, so back to my analysis because that's all I'm going to talk about since that's what you don't like I'm going to talk about it uh, from now on uh, so go ahead and turn the podcast off please so back to my analysis so that's all going on meanwhile what I think about Trump is I mean all these people you know I used to read Brad Thor novels well not anymore they're all lining up with Megyn Kelly it's like Megyn Kelly versus Trump on the playground who's with Megyn well, Megan has a big umbrella called Fox News, so they all want to run to be favored by Fox News because that's how they get promoted. Their books, their things, whatever they do. Nobody wants it. They're trying to make Trump a social pariah so that he is marginalized, so that he will have no impact in the future. They didn't even want to ask questions in the debate about policy. And some assholes out there are even saying like, well, listen, Zeph, what are Trump's policies you like so much? He wasn't allowed to go into that. They didn't ask those questions. I'm sure he will come forth with policy. He's got policies for his business, doesn't he? For growing business, for the economy, for all these things, and he will put them on the table. But listen to them. Look at them. These scumbags you wouldn't want anywhere near your home or your children or anywhere they should all be locked up somewhere or put in a mental hospital. So, 
So, yeah, so basically the way it feels to me, and that's all I can give you that's different from them, is that they will, mar usually they get their way. And the, 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 the great last hope, Trump, to save you from total totalitarian communism and tyranny is being taken down peg by peg by these people who obviously, Carly is on the side now of Hillary Clinton, obviously. I think that it's going to backfire. Well, I'm, you know, I've, I've, I have contributed to her campaign. I mean, a little bit, you know. Just, just because I was impressed with her, and I, you know, she was so obscure that no one knew who she, who she was, and and I had followed her, you know, and I respected her, and uh, I know a little bit about her background, not a lot, and um, but to me, I thought that having kind of a that sort of person in office, if there's going to be a woman president, we better have an alternative to Hillary, and then you know, because if Hillary gets in, uh, it's over, pretty much. Well, what people like Obama want is to put everyone in cages, take away everything they have, and punish them for having been born. That's basically what, what his spirit says to me. It's an anti-Christ spirit, anti-life, anti-human spirit. He's, he's not the anti-Christ, he's the anti-human, <laughs> the anti-life person. And the only people that would vote for someone like that are people with an IQ of 50. Or someone's going to get a goodie by doing it, like the Hollywood people, right? They put him in there because he gets, give me, he, they get kickbacks. Oh, no, I'm mad. You know, I'm mad. I'm, 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 I'm disappointed by people that I had, you know, not trusted completely, but I thought they were a better sort than that. But, you know, I can see, you know, just take the, take, you know, just... A lot of these people, I sort of, I can never look at them again the same way. I feel raped. You know, the fact that they would all run under the Fox umbrella and take Megan's side, even if, it, even if Donald Trump was simply, he's New York, you know, he's defending himself and he's saying things that, you know, he, he, you know she went after him and he went after her, you know, in the after, after hours, and he was disinvited to a red state dinner or whatever. Uh, this is petty stuff on a playground. This is grade school, folks. Now, he didn't do anything but be himself. But see, they have an orchestrated plan to get rid of him. And Clinton is, Bill Clinton's involved. And uh, big-time pundits like the Karl Roves are involved. The Bushes are involved. All these players are involved in engineering, and I'm sure the top social engineers and people like that, engineering his marginalization so he can be there and bring the ratings in and be a clown and be a clown while they go on and have a, you know, do you really care if it's George, or what's his name, Jeb or Hillary? Do you, does it really even matter? Jeb is a total, complete wuss, absolute New World Order cat, no way that he's for any kind of sovereignty of America. I, obviously, these people have been playing this duplicitous game from the beginning. He is pathetic. He barely rates when next to a Donald Trump. But you see, instead of winning on, the, on, on a level playing field, no, he wants to go destroy Trump, not, not himself directly, but through his group, through the cabal. And all the people that are running under the umbrella to the skirts of Fox News, uh, I just named a few, Brad Thorpe, Dana Lash, um, you know, and then you have people that are more like on our side because Trump represents like some kind of individual freedom and integrity for and some reason. So you have people that are fairly famous like Mark Levin st standing up with Trump and, and, you know, Dick Morris and some other people. But then all these other cowards that I say, I'll never read another. I knew there was something wrong with Brad Thor after reading some of his books. You know, I knew mean, there's disinfo about 9-11 and all that. I knew that. I was trying to find something decent, I, you know, or else I'd never read again. You read the Bible, you go, oh, here's where it was edited. I can see where it was edited. You know, do I, do I have a standard that's so high I'd never read it again? And I don't think so. Look, look at everywhere I turned. Everywhere I turned, there's, there's everywhere I turned, there's stupidity is the disappointment that hurts me. It's people's stupidity that really upsets me. But they're not, it's not stupid, they're just, 
you know, they know that the only hope they have in the future is to run under the skirts of Fox News. Mommy, mommy, <laughs> mommy, 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 mommy. Take care of me, mommy. And it's really disgusting. And how can you, how can you deal with people like that? I can't. Running, Tammy Bruce, running, running under the skirts. I, I side up with Megyn Kelly. It's like there isn't any real fight with Megyn Kelly. He's just mad. He said a few things. He, they, they set up the entire debate to attack him. And then the rest of it was pretend. I find that to be... 24 million, if you had Brett, if you had everyone on the stage and Donald Trump out, would they bring in 24 million people? They would barely register today because I know a lot of people now who are just, who have left Fox News and, and won't watch it again. And um, they certainly will never watch Megyn Kelly again. Now, not that that'll, that'll make a dent in her ratings, probably not. There's so many stupid people in this country. They will flock to Megyn Kelly, having done a, they're saying, oh, she's done a great job. She won that. Trump blew it. Trump's out of the presidency. Megyn took him out. It's that kind of thing. And, um, you know, so I'm like, is there a place I can go to get away from stupid human? And she's one of the stupidest, skankiest bitches I ever saw. How in the hell did she ever get a law degree? Well, no, I knew prostitutes that went to uh, law school. Yeah, no, I, I, I wasn't perfect. <laughs> when I was back in my 20s, way back, way back then. Sure. I knew prostitutes who were going to art school. They're going to they're in law school. They became lawyers. You know, they're using that to pay for their way. You know, more power to them. I mean, I'm not going to criticize you know, uh, the pictures I saw of her with, uh, you know, obviously, you know, that that be the that's what she reminded me of are the prostitutes that I knew that went to law school. That's all, and they would do you know Playboy spreads or spreads in magazines and porno films, and and they were going to law school while doing the porno films and everything to to put them through. She reminded me of like a porno queen. I wouldn't put it past her. I mean, it's like, that's what, and my God, my God, how about her poor husband, you know, the house husband with the, taking care of the kids? Well, this, this Jezebel on steroids is, you know, maybe he feels relief when she leaves the house. I mean, I, 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 would, I would kill myself if I was married to that. And then her, you know, Michael Savage brought out the fact that her nostrils were flaring. Savage is, you know, obviously we, we all kind of, it's like birds of a feather, you know? It's like the people that I would naturally get along with, we all sort of know who we are and we all sort of get in the same camp. It's weird. And then they all show themselves. You could see the divide between God and Satan. <laughs> oh, no, I don't think any of these people actually love the Lord, no. If they back Megan, they hate God. They just give God lip service. If they're... If they're on the other side of this whole thing, then they're more individuals, and then of course they love God, but they look like they'd be the last person to be with God because they're so rough around the edges. That's just the way Jesus had it. That's just the way Jesus' flock was. That's just the way it's always been. Anyway, Michael Savage was saying her, her nostrils are flying because her looks have changed. Back with the early pictures of her, like, you know, practically, you know, um, inviting you to, uh, you know, have at it with her in her pictures, in her dress with her boobs hanging out and whatever. You know, the thing is, is that you're trying to be real sexy. Uh, you know, she had kind of a regular featured face and everything. But as time went on, you know, her face has become hard. And he was pointing out that her nostrils were flaring more and more. Her nose was very hard edged. The, the lines of her face have become very hard and very, very ugly, you know, and she, she has a kind of a pretty look in a way if you back up from her, you know, kind of like, oh, pretty blonde, but you're noticing the hard edge, the hardness coming around. She's, 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 a, she's just a hard, cruel, uh, mean, mean-tempered, you know, C word or K word, take your pick. And, and I'll be, and I will just say this, 
what and you know the two butt boys that were underneath her, who I guess worship her as their queen. Chris, the, the Chris has fallen very far from the tree from his father, who was actually a, a sixty minutes journalist, but he was he was more the old school journalism. Chris Wallace is just a a pandering little snake, along with his uh, cohort, the big coward, totally afraid, uh, Brett Bear. Now the three, the three, the two of them, they they kneel down before their queen, Megyn Kelly. Yes. There's some wonderful memes going around Facebook. Uh, I just posted one. Right, I'm glad you're talking because I'm glad I'm not here alone to go through. <laughs> See, folks, at least I got Trish yeah. because otherwise I'd be. Can you imagine if I was? Listen, I would never do a podcast like this if I was living on my own because I would die of sorrow. There's one where Donald Trump is is is. A, a, he's sitting on a, he's riding a lion he's riding a huge lion yeah. and he's got a confederate flag flying yeah. <laughs> I love it I mean let's offend them all right well but and see there's one where he's um, <laughs> he's got the the America top hat on and he says you're fired and it's got Obama falling down in front of him well look the th fact is do you think they'll be able to marginalize him like Ron Paul I don't think so because you know, Ron Paul was very polite, and and that Donald, Donald is, a, is, is he would never. Ron Paul would never draw twenty four million. No, which, by the way, broke the record by eight hundred percent. Yeah, the people weren't going to watch literally the to check out Megyn Kelly. Uh, no, no. If it was Megyn and the the Tweedledum and Tweedledee there, basically, uh, Chris the uh, the the sellout. Uh, the acorn went very far from the tree. It's almost like I, I put up a clip of uh, Scarface to make a comparison, but people are too stupid to see what I was doing. So, again, stupidity. Well, the scene where Tony Montana is in the hoity-toity restaurant with all the proper prim people around, you know how it is down in Florida, you know, West Palm Beach or whatever, you know what I mean. Uh... And they're all very prim and proper, you know, and having their dinners. And here's Tony. So this is what it's all about. They didn't give me the full clip because what he starts saying is, so it's about drinking, eating, effing, yeah. yeah this is what it's all about, huh? This is the big deal. And the people start reacting. Uh, and then his wife, played by um, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, jumps up and says, you know, we're losers, blah, blah, and she, she gets taken away. We need to come into that scene earlier, but they don't have a clip. But then he, he goes around and calls them all hypocrites. And he says, say good, good night to the bad man. It's the last bad man you're ever going to see. Well, in a way, you know, there was great honesty in Tony, you see. Great, that was one of the best scenes ever directed, ever choreographed, ever acted, and ever written by Oliver Stone as the screenwriter. So you can see the, in his case, in his family, the acorn fell way, way, way far away from the tree. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, facts speak for themselves. But in that particular show, they had a dolly shot that, you know, if you, if you look at my clip, you'll see it where it begins, and it goes, it's a beautiful, smooth dolly shot. This is what filmmaking used to be went all the way around to, to really, really enhance the scene of Al Pacino uh, telling off the hypocrites, the establishment. So Donald Trump is a bit like Scarface, you know, like Tony Montana, Scarface. And, you know, in the midst of all the hypocrites, I mean, he gets his hands dirty. He's got to deal with the mob, you know, he's got to deal with the unions, he's got to deal with all kinds of stuff. You, and you, half the stuff that it probably takes to keep his thing going, you don't want to know about it, but I'm sure... You know, he's not about to curb. He's also from New York. And he also is used to speaking his mind. And he's not going to be some kind of coddled, coached, little, sniveling piece of crap like Jeb Bush. Who is basically a suck-ass. An adult. And he's no leader that I would follow. Would you? I have no respect for this man. At all. He doesn't deserve it, is why. When you earn it from me, you get it. Well, the Donald does deserve it. 
especially the way he handled himself in the debate. And then afterwards, he blew off a little steam. He said, there's blood coming out of our eyes and, and elsewhere. So what? And for that, he was disinvited to the red state dinner. And, that, and for that, then they all, see, they were waiting for that. That's a piece of red meat. So that, they, they put Megan in his place. Yeah, then they invited, more they, even more hypocritical, they invited Megan. You tell the red state people to F off. Never, I, I would never ever deal with them. His name is Eric Erickson. He is a piece of you know what. So all these pieces of you know what can go sit together and jerk each other off for all I give a damn. But you know something? Never again will I ever see them the same way. You know, it's like my eyes have been opened. And I didn't last two seconds in this politics thing before I was just devastated by all the sheer evil that I saw. And I don't see how, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, we need the Lord. Obviously, we need God. I need God bad, you know, it's just... God's the only thing that makes my life tolerable because otherwise, you see, I want all boats to rise. It doesn't mean if I'm doing good and, every, and the world out there is going to hell, well, then, you know, it sort of wrecks it. If I'm doing bad and the world's doing good, and I've, I've been in that situation where I was doing bad, but everybody else was doing good. All my friends were doing good. They're all making lots of money and they were laughing at me. That I was doing good and I was making money, and then, but, but I'm not laughing at them and they're all crying and I can't help them. Oh, well, because there's just too many of them. <laughs> they all do bad together. It's like when they're doing bad, I'm doing good, and when I'm doing bad, they're doing good. And it's always been that way. But what, the difference is when I'm doing good, I don't gloat. And when they're doing good, they gloat. So we have. Why? Because the Lord keeps me in line. Because if I did something like that, then I'd be doing bad and every, you know, it would go down the tubes. <laughs> well, I wish they had a better facial picture of him. But uh, I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. <laughs> Wonderful. I don't know. I, I've, you know, the, I've... I don't know. I mean, the idea that Obama wanted to get rid of the Gadsden flag is, is another thing that, uh, yeah, that's more like Scarface. I like that better. Yeah. You need to do the Scarface scene where Tony's got the, the big gun. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, you're probably amused at all this. Well, it wasn't always like that. I mean, there were times I was doing good and other people were doing good and I guess we were okay, but there was always this kind of pissing contest with people. And I never understood that. I, I, I've, I learned something when in the study of um, either Buddhism or Hinduism, I can't remember now which one, but I mean, it was like, if, you know, if there's suffering anywhere in the world, we will delay our enlightenment until we are all you know, free of suffering. You know, why? Because there can't be any individual enlightenment without the whole world being enlightened. Because if one person is suffering somewhere objectively, then that one person's enlightenment is no good. If people are suffering out there, then if other people are doing relatively okay, the option they have, I mean, this is what they do in Hollywood. I mean, oh my God. In Hollywood, they all have bubbles. And stat they all have a hierarchy. And so the, 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 they only, they thrive on the other guy doing bad and gloating. So they get in their bubble, like they'll never come down. And then they, 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 they lord it over everybody who's suffering. You know, your producers, your execs, your business execs, your actors, they act like that. It's really ugly. No, no, it's, it's I, I'm not even saying it to the level of, you, you know, I read an article once in the Hollywood Reporter where they were saying, you know, there's some people that just, the way they are is they, they don't feel good about a promotion unless someone else loses their job. That's what you're dealing with. Well, go see Kevin Spacey in an old video called Swimming with Sharks from the, from the 1990s. And uh, you'll see exactly what you're dealing with in Hollywood. All right? Swimming with Sharks, Kevin Spacey. You see, you'll get a, it's on Netflix. Just go ahead and 
check that out and you'll see exactly. But yeah, they all they lord it over you. They're like, how you doing there? I'm doing well. Now the thing is, I remember when I was living in a little apartment. I think it was fifty bucks a month, and it had roach infested. And I was playing music, and and you know, I was playing drums and getting paid, and you know, it didn't take much to pay the rent or whatever. And so it was pretty easy. I, I felt, you know, I felt empowered. I felt uh, I didn't have a care in the world. I was, you know, twenty one years old. I didn't have a care in the world. I, I felt like wow. But the minute I got around people that were more well healed, and how they shut me out. I, I suddenly I, I, I realized, wow, that's just really weird, huh? I didn't really deal with it because I was, you know, I was into my music. I had my music. I had my stereo. I had my my place. I had a little truck. I, you know, that could carry my drums. I was stoked. But apparently, you know, and then when I'd see other people that had kind of dropped out and were like, they had a Volkswagen van and they were just sort of driving around and they do like odd jobs to. <laughs> You know, some some people are like mechanics and other people just do, you know, some odd jobs to, to go again. They were surf bums. I always felt they were, they were so far advanced of everybody. You know what I mean? So I, I, I was, that's the way I looked at it all. Anyway, in looking at this thing, I, uh, I became so thoroughly disgusted. And I'm trying to see the forest for the trees, but I mean, like, I said that God's not separate from politics, so the only thing I got to hang on to right now is that the Donald Trump somehow is put there by the Lord. I, I, I can confirm that in my spirit. And that's why the 24 million, no, no, unheard of ratings. Unheard of. Now, I know all the conspiracy theories. He's a friend of the Clintons, and this is just a ploy to make sure Hillary gets in. Well, you know, the, the establishment on Fox News wants Hillary to win. So, so the conservative thing is a ruse to begin with. So there's a lot longer-running conspiracy theory for you. They want Hillary because Hillary's going to be great for big corporate business because they're going to get payback. But the little people are going to lose everything they have. And, you know, the, then she wants to put you in retraining camps. Which means those of you who are too old to be retrained, <laughs> see you later. Well, at least you're going home, right? No, no, I've, 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 this planet, I, I absolutely, for me, it's total hell. Because everything that's going on around me, and not in my life, I mean, I'm creating things, but I'm, I'm creating things to deal with what I'm seeing too, you know, so I'm reacting to it. But because everyone around me is on the, you know, the level they're on, of just a very low level spiritually, you know, like a spiritual IQ of three. And because of that, you know, the, 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 the wanton meanness and, the, you know, the, 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 the race wars and the, all the stuff going on and all the people falling for every social um, engineering uh, meme there is. I mean, what, what am I supposed to make of it? You know, I, I know the Lord wants me to be compassionate to people. You know, but oh, pauvre see, oh, there for the grace of God go I. And oh, they're just stupid because they're just, they can't help it. You know, you shouldn't be so judgmental about people that are stupid. You're not even supposed to call them stupid. Yeah, where's your compassion? Where's the love, Zeph? Where's the love of Christ? Now you see why we're not supposed to talk about anything in church to keep the love alive. Well, my, my um, calling it hell is because, I, you know, it's, the, for me, it's like the best of times, the worst of times. I'm doing things that I, I really like to do, and I'm able to do those things in life. And um, things that, that, that are more than just for me, you know what I mean? It's just things that are like, I can't explain it, but there's a sense of purpose, you know, which I didn't always have. And when I didn't have it, I, I'm the kind of person that could could have easily been like a drifter, sort of, you know, just drifting from place to place. I could have easily been that kind of person, you know, so a vagabond. And, um, you know, but the Lord has me as a householder, you know, and it was nothing I'd planned. Nothing that I thought that I, you know, um, deserved even, you know, but just, well, but here I am, you know, it's the oddest thing. But... 
all that's increased the faith in the Lord, and you know, it's also increased the 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 uh, the feeling of uh, pain from knowing how many people are suffering out there and wondering what to do. And hearing that song by ten years after, uh, I'd love to change the world, but I don't know what to do, so I'm leaving it up to you. It's like, yeah, cop out, fine, you know. But nobody knows what to do. But one thing I do know is when I see this thing lining up like the play, you, you know, the, the big picture is this. So you want Hillary Clinton then, right? So kill the Donald off, uh, marginalize him like, like, like Ron Paul, and, um, you know, and put in, I don't know, some candidate like Carly Fiorina to run against Hillary and then declare Hillary the winner. Is that what you want? It's like, that's what they want. And if it looks like Hillary won't win, they might just declare martial law. I mean, who knows? You know, they'll just at the point of a gun put her in. You know, uh, again, Disneyland, you have a say. You have a say. Uh, you can vote. Your voice matters. And then, no, it doesn't. Uh, because we got the guns. We got the power. We got the military. You, you, you do what we tell you. But you said I could vote. I, I don't understand. I'm, I'm confused. Which one is right? Meanwhile, Obama's taking the longest vacation of any president in the history of uh, all countries and the entire world. His vacations are almost endless, with an endless expenditures at your expense. All by design, all meant to make you feel like little stupid people. You enjoy that? Don't worry, if you're miserable, that was by design too. We win, you lose. Ha 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 ha, stupid little people. And that's what they think of you. You're stupid little people that need to be told what to do, be seen and not heard, or we'll just bump you off. And that's kind of the attitude they have behind the scenes that you don't see. But that's what, that's what motivates them when they get in their meetings and they do their little, their little uh, you know, uh, soirees. Add to this the spiritual battle raging in politics. I mean, politics obviously needs people like me. You know, to be a commentator, even if all I do is a, a tweet here and there. Because um, obviously there's very few people there that have, um, that are really, you know, that are really grounded in, in God or that know where they want to go, know what they're doing. I mean, there's very few. These people all seem to be spinning around. These are all people that uh, have been propped up by Fox News and others as journalists, leaders, pundits, like Charles the Joke Krauthammer. There's a guy that is a complete total liar and an absolute, you know, absolutely had me bamboozled and fooled until I saw that the, 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 they all line up trying to push Trump off the stage. You know, by lying and saying that he, he lost in the debates where he didn't lose, he won by a landslide. And every poll shows that. But Crowdhammer lied. And they all line up together. And the establishment wants Hillary, left, right, Republican, Democrat, you name it. Well, she might not be up to the challenge. She may not even run. I mean, it might just all fail, but... They know the only way to put her in is presence, and she can't debate. She can't give speeches, really. So they just, they just have to put her in. They just have to figure a way out to fool you, which they will. They'll figure a way to fool you. And they'll stick her in, and that'll be the end of that. And then you can have your last best hope, Donald Trump. Oh, I know. I've seen the pictures of, of Hillary and Bill and Donald how partying down. I know. They're friends. I'm not sure how good of friends they are now. Is it all a ruse? Well, Alex Jones thinks so. I, I you know, I'm not there yet. I, I don't, I don't think so. I, I, I'm, I'd like to believe that Donald Trump is sincere. It's more a spiritual thing with me. And that's why I'm bringing it up, because there is one spiritual thing going on. Now, if all Christians say, Ooh, I don't deal with politics, I'm just me and the Lord, nye, nye, nye. we're going to deal with the end times. <laughs> uh, the problem with that is, is that if, uh, if there was an anointing on any candidate, then those people should be about that, or else they're spiritual idiots and morons. 
and they have nothing to do with Jesus Christ, and everything they do is lip service, and they're total phonies anyway. So, F them. Uh, you get that on high from the Lord. F them. Flaunt it. It's not easy being a child of the Most High. You know, being a son of the Most High God. Being an eternal son from before and after. <laughs> just pull, just messing with you. No, just just uh, seeing if anyone will go for the bait. No, it's terrible. I, no, Jeff's proclaimed himself a son of the Most High God. Is up to bitch slap the rest of us. Yeah, well, you know, the reason people listen to me in a lot of ways is the same reason they listen to Donald Trump, because I speak my mind, and today, you know, I'm really bummed out at the uh, incredible stupidity, the working word here, of uh, these people, the, 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 the grade school playground of Megyn Kelly and her Fox News uh, cowards. And, and <clears throat> my God, they're a joke. No, no, I, I wouldn't want to shake hands with any of them, no. I would, would not, if I'm not going to shake hands with the President of the United States have offered, then I wouldn't shake hands with them. No, I reserve that for people that earn it. I don't just shake any hand. You got to earn it with me. You know, prove that you are who you say you are. Hey, you could be a total mess and a total sinner, and I'll shake your hand. It's just there's a certain thing I can't cross. A certain line. Doesn't mean I hate you. It just means, you know, you're going to have to go, you're going to have to kind of renounce a few things before you get me to shake your hand. I'm not going to shake the devil's hand either. No way. You know, um, not with someone that kills so many of our people. No, no, thank you. I'm not going to shake that bloody, the bloody hand, no. No, I'm not going to shake that hand that causes nothing but suffering upon this earth. No! I'm not going to shake a hand who has a policy of creating human, human misery wherever he goes in, in Barack Obama. No! How he lectures the Africans and doesn't want them to have refrigerators or whatever it is. No, I, I know he wants to promote human suffering. That's what apparently gets him off. That's what makes him feel successful. Don't want it. Look what he did to the middle class in America. Completely decimated. What are they going to do? Tout him as the big champion of the middle class? Worst economy ever, worst recovery ever, worst middle class ever, and the most people unemployed of all time. Certainly more than during the Great Depression, because there are more people. So, you know, but something like 92 to 93 million people out of work, not in the workforce. Worse since 1967. That's a record you can be proud of. The guy sitting there self-congratulating himself, going on endless vacations uh, to reward himself for what a great job he's done. When the real psychopaths are saying, yeah, let's put them all out of work. <laughs> then we could just have fish in a barrel time. <laughs> well, okay, I'm going to get off the, my, um, my awful tirade here. And I just, you know, yes, I'm going to pray. In Jesus' name, I pray right now for peace and calm and a sense of total joy to come over the people, all the people who have endured this hor horrible podcast of mine that shouldn't even go up. And if it does wind up up there, this prayer is for you. I pray that whatever I've said will just bounce off you and that your joy is restored to full because that's the thing that the world cannot take is your joy. So I pray your joy be full in Jesus Christ right now. Amen. And with that, I bid you shalom.